Hello everyone, so here's a quick portfolio update as of September 28th. So my overall balance is sitting at 100,000 Canadian. If we go to my trading interface in my margin account, I'm left with 1,048 cash USD. Last week it was up about maybe 3,200, but I did lose a bit last week, so it brought me down to 1,048. Kinda hurts, but it is what it is. I've got no Canadian cash. I'm basically just trading in US selling options. So the current positions in my margin account is only a naked put that I'm rolling on Rocket mortgages. So it's at a 23 strike. If we look at Rocket right now, it is below 23. I think it's trading at 20.52. But one of the benefits of naked puts, selling naked puts, is that you can roll easily for the following week or even two weeks after for a credit. So that's what I've been doing. I keep rolling for a credit until eventually Rocket comes back up above 23. I am looking to make some credit spreads, but the market is a little bit weird today. Everything's up. I did put an order for a credit spread on a call spread on Amazon at 32.85 in case it runs up a little bit again today because it had two green days in a row. So I'm, I like to go against the trend. So if it went up two days in a row, I'll go out of the money hoping that it's not going to reach and maybe come back down. So I'm selling an out of the money call spread at 32.85, but I put in an exaggerated order so that it gives a bit of room in case it goes up and I can get filled. And right now, see, I'm asking for a dollar. It's trading between 35 cents and a dollar 15. So it's only going to get filled if Amazon runs up maybe to 31.70. Netflix and Tesla, they all have high IV, but I don't know if I want to touch Tesla. It ran up. So normally I would sell, it's a green day, so maybe I'd sell a call spread, but Tesla is capable of running up many days in a row. I could do a put spread as well, but I'm not too sure it's because it ran up a lot, so maybe there's a better chance that it comes back down. You could see just today, the high of the day is 428, the low of the day is 415. So almost a 15 point swing in one day, so it's a, it's a lot. The expected move is about 30 points. CMG has high IV as well, I could potentially sell something, maybe I would I'm leaning more towards a put spread on CMG. Netflix has high IV, but it does, I'm not able to collect decent premiums. If I go, if I look at the expected move, it's about 18 points. So if I do 482 minus 18, that's 464. So if I do a put spread at 464, I don't seem to collect enough credit. So 465 is the closest strike and 460, five point wide. Actually, it's not bad. I can collect 82 cents. That's I can collect about 90 cents. That's not bad, actually. I could do this. So maybe because it dropped, the high of the day is 482, the low is 479. So this could be a potential trade, actually. But I'll do it uh, after this video ends. So pretty much Netflix is didn't move much for the day. It was green, but then it came back down. So it's as if I made the trade on Friday because there wasn't any move today. In my TFSA, let's look at the balances first. So I've got about 35 US cash, 2400 Canadian cash. I've got market value of 5000 Canadian and US 2000. If I go to my positions, so I've got available buying power of about 34 US and 2400 Canadian. But if I go to my positions, it's all dividend stock. So I'm putting I'm trying to buy a little bit of dividend stocks slowly gradually. I've got Bell, so that's a Telecom in Canada. Pays, I think, 5% dividends, Bank of Nova Scotia, 5%. And I'm trying to buy them on a dip. Got gold that I bought at 179.84 and it still went lower, which is weird because you would think that when the market drops, gold goes up. But it, when the market drops these days, the gold drops with it. So that's weird. Manulife Insurance Company, bought at 1878. Also pays about 6% dividends. Pizza Pizza, I think, right now is paying about 5% uh, as well. Let's look it up. I don't remember. So it's Pizza Pizza is paying about 7% yield. The uh, reason I bought Pizza Pizza is because I f I'm not too worried in case we have a lockdown because I think in terms of food being ordered or bought on takeout, I think pizza is one of them. So I'm not too worried about a potential lockdown. AT&T, just because it's one of the highest dividends in, on, in, the, US, in the US market, it's uh, been taking a hit. If you look at AT&T in the past... Uh, I don't know, five or 10 years, there is no capital appreciation. Let's look at five years. Look at this, it, it's actually, it's, a, it's at a five year low, kind of weird. Even the 52 week low is 26, so I'm not even that far off. So that's that's why I bought it. I, I felt like compared to the past five years, it's pretty low yield, dividend yield is pretty high. And I think payout ratio is not so bad either. I think it's about 60 or 70%. So it's got enough income to pay for the dividends. 
Exxon Mobil, for example, has really high dividend, but the payout ratio, I think, is above 100. They don't even have enough net income to pay for the dividends. They're using their cash reserves to pay the, the high dividend. So it's not really sustainable. And I've got TD as well, another Canadian bank. So I'm putting in $1,000 chunks just to buy in gradually in case the market drops. I'm not sure if there's going to be another correction, but I'm also not confident enough to put all the money in at one time. I'd rather dollar cost average down in case the market drops. Yeah, so these are my positions in my TFSA, just small dividend stocks. Because anyways, my main goal is I'm using this leverage, my TFSA balance. I'm using it in my margin account to trade options, which today I haven't done anything yet just because I lost last week, so I'm a little bit hesitant. Let's go back to CMG, 1240. Let's look at Netflix again. Might do Netflix actually, 465. It's only what, 15 points away, 18 points away. Yeah, I see now Netflix is back up. All right, if I go to my RSP, balance is I've got 7,000 US cash, 1,300 cash Canadian. My positions in my RSP is basically, basically two covered calls. I've got IWM 100 shares and Virgin Galactic 100 shares. Virgin Galactic took a big jump today, so that's good because my cost was 23 and last week was trading almost at $15. So I'm kind of glad that it went up and I've got a covered call at a 23 strike for October 16. So if I want this stock long term, I basically don't want Virgin Galactic to go above 23 by October 16. But if it does, whatever, I collected some premiums, I lose my shares or I could roll the call option as long as I can and keep collecting premium from it as much as possible. But that's that's my goal with this stock is just to collect premiums from it. And it's a stock that I think will eventually go up over time. Same thing with IWM, it's an ETF that tracks the Russell 2000. So I'm, I'm confident that over time it goes up. So my goal is just to collect, pre my initial goal was to buy and hold it forever and sell out of the money uh, covered calls every week. But then the stock dropped in, in March, so I've been, selling out of the money i've been selling out of the money covered calls but taking the risk by selling at a strike that is lower than my cost of 151 until it finally recovered and now i just want to uh, get the most premiums out of it as possible so i'm selling at the money strike so 152 strikes and i've been doing this for uh, since end of february and i've been collecting decent premiums so these are my two positions in my covered call. Still have some available buying power in my RSP. Maybe could do another covered call on a stock that I think will go up over time. I was considering Slack, but um, after, but it it already went up a bit. So I, I think I'll just wait on it. I was considering it at around 24, 25, and then I think right now it's at 27 already. So I, I I guess I'll just wait, see if there's something else I'm more confident in. And in my RESP, got nothing left in cash, just 88 US and 94 Canadian. And it's basically a covered calls on Intel. So I bought it at 56 and then after earnings it dropped to 48 and now it's slowly creeping up and I'm just selling covered calls. My last call on it is a 56 strike at, at October 23rd and I'm collecting very little premiums because I have to go so far because I have to keep the 56 strike. I don't want to sell at a strike lower than my cost although if i've been selling at like 51 or 52 i would have been safe all this time because it never it never went past it but obviously i don't know that so yeah so this was a quick overview of my portfolio quite simple my main goal is really to trade options in my margin account and generate consistent income every week doesn't have to be the same amount every week but at least every week a profitable week that's what I, that's what my goal is right now with my margin account in my TFSA account, in my TFSA account, my goal is to buy dividend stocks when they dip so that I get that high yield and gradually in $1,000 chunk. In my RSP, because it's I don't plan on using it anytime soon, um, I could do cover calls on stocks that might take time to recover. I don't care. But my plan is just to do covered calls in my RSP. I could also do dividends, I guess, as well, if it's something I'm not going to touch anyways. And our, my RSP also mixed between covered calls and dividend stocks. I think once Intel recovers to 56, I think I'll get out and I think I'll just buy uh, some dividend stocks like I'm doing in my uh, TFSA because this is definitely a long-term investment. This is at least 15 years. I could do growth stocks, but I don't want to make that bet. I don't want to buy a stock thing that in five years it's going to go up. What if I was wrong? I waited five years and it, it eventually didn't do anything. It came back down, for example. So I'd rather do something that generates income every month or every week. So either dividends or or covered calls. All right, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Like always, if you can open an account with Questrade to trade on the stock market, use my referral link below to get $50 in free trades 
Also check out the other referral links below. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button, share with a friend and, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.